Hi everyone, my name is Miss Connolly. I started making videos for my fifth grade class and decided I want everyone to learn during this crazy time. So if you have a topic you want me to cover grades one through five, um, Connolly Math at home at gmail.com. I'll make a video for you and get it out to you. So give me a, shoot me an email if you need some help. So today we're gonna continue talking about conjectures with fractions. So a conjecture is an opinion that we can form based on a couple examples that we can assume to be true all the time. And we can use these to help us compare fractions, but there's some understanding behind it, so let's get to that. Today we're gonna to be talking about comparing to one half. So first we need to understand what makes a, a fraction equivalent to one half, okay? So up here, if you can see, I have drawn several representations, all equivalent to one half. And I want us to come up with um, a conjecture for what we know is true about when a fraction is equivalent to one half. So while I'm writing these up, I'm gonna be asking you to think about the relationship between the numerator and the denominator and how we know that it's one half, okay? So obviously I've labeled the first one for you one half. So when I look at the next one, I can think about the total number of equal parts that I've made, one, two, three, four, and that is my denominator. And then I'm going to think about how many is shaded in that's equivalent to one half. So one, two. So to show equivalent uh, uh, fraction equivalent to one half with fourths, I've shaded in two fourths. And I want you to think about the relationship between two and four, and how do we know that that's one half? Okay. Let's look at the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six. And how many are shaded in? We see three. Again, is there some, a really, uh, pattern you're starting to see with the relationship between the numerator and the denominator? Be thinking about it, okay? And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, and four eighths are shaded in to show one half. So if you need to pause so you can think about it longer, please do that now. But what I'm gonna explain is the relationship between the numerator and the denominator and how that I know each and every time what's gonna be equivalent to one half, okay? So let's look at two fourths. I see two as the numerator and four as the denominator. And I say to myself, two is half of four. So I know that this is equivalent to one half. My numerator is half of my denominator. Down here, three sixths. 3 is half of 6. My numerator is half of my denominator, so I know it's equivalent to 1 half. Let's look, look at 4 eighths. Is 4 half of 8? It sure is. So my numerator 4 is half of my denominator 8, so I know that this fraction is equivalent to 1 half. Same thing up here. Is 1 half of 2? Yes. So I know that one half is obviously a half. So what is the conjecture that I want you thinking about when we're thinking about one half? Every single time you noticed when the numerator is half of the denominator, our fraction is equivalent to one half. So let's come up with some other equivalencies real quick before we move into comparisons. When I think about the denominator 10, I think what is half of 10? And that gives me a fraction equivalent to a half, five tenths, okay? When I think about 12, what is a, what's half of 12? Six. So six twelfths is equivalent to one half. I'll just do one more. When we think about fourteenths, eh, let's not go in order. Let's, let's throw you off a little bit. Hundreds, when we think about hundreds, what is half of a hundred? Fifty. So my numerator is half of my denominator. Therefore, my fraction is equal to one half. So if you've been writing down your conjectures in a notebook, like I suggested, here we are with the first part of this. When the numerator is half of the denominator, the fraction is equivalent to one half. Again, when the numerator is half of the denominator, the fraction is equivalent to one half. Several examples, four eighths, 50 hundredths, three sixths, all those numerators are half of the denominator. So when you see that, you know a fraction is equal to one half. Okay, so how do we use this?
this to our benefit when we're comparing fractions? Well, if we compare a fraction to one half, that's going to help us understand, um, if we compare both fractions to one half, it's gonna help us understand which one might be greater, okay? Does it work in every single comparison? No, but is it an option? Yes, so let's look at some comparisons and let's think about developing even more of this conjecture so we understand how to compare fractions. All right, so. Let's think about this. I'm gonna give you a fraction, two fractions, okay? And I want us to think about what we know about these two fractions. We can do a representation too, okay? So I'll get that going. But when you look at these two fractions, I want you to think, is either of them equal to one half? Okay, so when we think about five tenths, I'm gonna ask myself, is my numerator half of my denominator? And so I say it's five half of 10? Yes, so I know that this is equal to one half. Okay, so I have a fraction equal to one half. So then I look at my other fraction and I say, is three half of eight? What's half of eight? Four, right? So I'm gonna draw my same size representation here. I'm gonna mark off one half so it's easy to see. And I'm gonna shade in my three eighths. And what happened with three eighths? Is it a half? We decided no, because four is half of eight. So if our numerator is less than half of the denominator, what do we know about our fraction down here? Is it equal to a half, less than a half, or greater than a half? And you can clearly see that this is less than a half. So, curious. When the numerator is half of the denominator, it's equal to one half. And when the numerator is less than half the denominator, it's less than one half. Will that always be true? Well, let's think about it, okay? So first of all, since this one was equal to a half and that one was less than a half, I know which one is greater. I didn't have to do all this jazz if I'm thinking about which one's a half and which one's less than a half. But let's see if it's true every time that um, when a fraction is, when the numerator is less, less than half the denominator, will it be less than one half? So, when I'm thinking about two sixths, I know half of six is three sixths. So that's one half. Two is less than half of the denominator. Half the denominator would be three, and two is less than that. So is this fraction equal to a half? Wait, the half really big right here. Is it equal to a half, less than a half, or more than a half? When your numerator is less than half of your denominator, which it was in both of these cases, our fraction is less than one half. Okay, so I'm gonna say it again. When a fraction is less then half of the denominator, your fraction is less than one half. Okay, so let's think about another half, 12. Half of 12 is six. But if I have four twelfths, is that greater than or less than half? Well, the good news is you guys know how to compare two fractions with the same denominator. We went over that already. So, you know that four twelfths is less than six twelfths. So when you have a, denom or a numerator that is less than half of the denominator, your fraction is less than one half. Is this true? Let's look again. 
Let's take half of um, four. Half of four is going to be two fourths. So if I pick a, a numerator less than one half of the denominator, is my fraction less than a half? It sure is. So we have another piece of this conjecture. I'm going to put the poster up all at the end because there's a lot going on on it. When you have a, a numerator that is less than half of the denominator, your fraction is less than one half. So there's one other part of this. How do we know if something is greater than one half? Well, let's take a look. Maybe let's look at the number line this time because I've been using a lot of area models. So we have zero, we have one. Okay, so I'm going to represent fractions between zero and one. I'm going to mark off one half here, but let's talk about sixths. Okay, so one half is the same as three sixths because I know my numerator is half of my denominator. So I have one sixth, two sixths. We over here have numerators that are less than half of the denominator. So these ones are less than one half. But what happens when my numerator is greater, my numerator is greater than half of my denominator. So half of six is three, four is greater than that, four is greater than half. So you can clearly see on this representation that when your numerator is greater than half of the denominator, your fraction is greater than a half. Okay, so let's look at the whole thing. All right, and then we're gonna use it to compare some fractions. So, don't mind my folding. I didn't want to give away all of the secrets at the beginning. And my very small whiteboard. All right, so we already went over the green. When the numerator is half of the denominator, the fraction is equivalent to one half. Okay, so we know that. So how are we going to use this when we're comparing? Well, we're going to think about is our fraction greater than a half or less than a half. And the one that's greater than a half is going to be larger than the one that's less than a half. So let's continue. If the numerator is greater than half of the denominator, the fraction is greater than one half. So you saw that over here with four six being greater than half of the denominator. Five is greater than half of six. So these fractions over here, greater than one half. Okay? And lastly, if the numerator is less than half of the denominator, the fraction is less than one half. So we've seen that as well, okay? We've seen all three situations. We have a numerator that is less than half of the denominator, which you can see is less than one half, okay? Numerator is less than half of six, half of six is three, so I know that this fraction is automatically less than one half. So how do we use this? when we're given fractions to compare. Let's take a look. And then I'm going to give you some as a small assignment at the end. Okay, so I'm going to think about if I have four sixths and I'm comparing it to one fourth. I have different numerators, different denominators, and both fractions are less than a whole. What do I do? Another option is to compare them to one half. So, I'm going to use my conjecture. I have 6 as the denominator. Half of 6 is 3. So, 3 6 would be 1 half. Okay, so if I'm doing half of 6, 3 6 would be the 1 half mark. When my numerator is greater than half of my denominator, which it is, my fraction is greater than a half. So if I wanted to, I could represent, but I already know all this, okay? I'm relying on some of my conjectures. You can also always represent, okay? Then I'm gonna think about one fourth. Well, I know half of four is two, so two fourths would be one half over here. Is this greater than a half or less than a half? Well, I'm looking at my numerator and it's less than half of my denominator. So, I have a fraction that's greater than one half. I have a fraction that's less than one half. 
So, I'm relying on the conjecture. I know that since this fraction is greater than one half, and this fraction is less than one half, that four sixths is greater than one fourth. Okay, you can also represent on the area model and number line, but um, as fractions get a little closer in size and they're hard to tell in the representations, we're gonna be relying on these conjectures. So make sure that you're writing them down and practicing them. So let's do one more example, and then I'm gonna give you some examples to try on your own. All right, so let's say we have two eights. You should be thinking about comparing it to a half right now because that's the lesson. And let's talk about six tenths. All right, we cannot compare because they have different numerators, so we can't use that conjecture. They have different denominators, we can't use that conjecture. Both fractions are less than one whole. We can't use that conjecture that helps us compare. Watch the other videos. And so I asked myself, can I compare them to one half maybe and see which one's greater? I can. So I'm gonna think about this. Eights. What is half of eight? Half of eight is four eights. And if you want to draw the representation so you can see what is half, do it, okay? Until we have these and we're fluid with them, that's fine, okay? So, four eighths is half of eight. So I say to myself, my numerator is less than half of my denominator, so my fraction is less than one half. So two eighths, keep it in your brain, is less than one half. Then, I go over here and I look at six tenths, and I say, what is half of 10? And I say, half of 10 is five. So then I say, is my numerator more than half or less than half of my denominator? And I see that my numerator, six, is greater than half of my denominator. So this one is greater than a half. So I know, because I'm relying on my conjecture, that six tenths is greater than two eighths, because I was thinking about comparing them to one half. Okay, I lied, I'm gonna do one, just one more real quick. So I just want to think about, and I just want to show one where we actually do have a half. So when I think about what is half of four, half of four is two. So I actually have a fraction that is equivalent to one half. So then I look at my other fraction, because I have different numerators, different denominators, both less than a whole. I look at that other one and I say, is this one more than a half or less than a half? And I say, well, eight is half of, or sorry, four is half of eight, so this one is less than a whole, or less than a half, sorry, less than a half. So I know my fraction that is, is equivalent to one half is greater than my fraction that is less than half, okay? I'm just realizing that sometimes they actually could be equivalent, so if you have two fourths and four eighths, just know that sometimes you also can write the equal sign because those are both equal to a half. So what did you learn today? You learned that when the numerator is half of the denominator, you have a fraction that is equivalent to a half. You learned that when the numerator is greater than half of the denominator, that your fraction is greater than a half. When you, learn, you also learned that when your numerator is less than half the denominator, your fraction is less than a half, and so here you are. You're gonna practice using that conjecture to make these comparisons. I wanna know which one is greater, three six or one eighth. I wanna know which one's greater, five tenths or six eighths. And one last one that I wanna know is greater, one half and two so, write these down. I want you to think about which one is greater. Compare them to a half. Is it equal to a half? Is it more than a half? Is it less than a half? And that's gonna help you compare at the end, okay?